Now, as we've mentioned, we've assembled some of the leading voices in this debate over hydrofracking, and we're going to hear from all sides of this issue tonight. And starting us off, well, we're going to begin on the pro-fracking side. Tom West, an attorney for Chesapeake Energy, the country's leading natural gas drilling company, and Chris Tucker, a spokesman for Energy In-Depth, which advocates for the hydrofracking industry. Now, on the other side, we have Bill Dubanovich. He's an attorney with the firm of Parker and Wakeman, who represents families in Pennsylvania who believe their water supply has been contaminated. And also joining us, Paul Gallet, the president of the environmental group Riverkeeper. Gentlemen, thank you all very much. All right. Well, let me uh, give you guys, not that it's a presidential debate, but kind of opening statements here. And Tom, start me off real briefly. Tell the audience why hydrofracking at the end of the day, and obviously we'll focus this segment environmentally and health, uh, is a safe and viable alternative of energy. You know, l let's start with the track record in New York State. Okay, I think that's understated. The, the DEC and the industry has an excellent track record in this state. There are 14,000 operating wells in New York today. All right, all of them have been uh, drilled. All of them, uh, them have been stimulated with chemicals. Many of them, most of them, have been hydraulically fractured. All right, and we don't have any significant environmental problems in New York State whatsoever. Chris? We're talking about technology that's been used since the mid-1940s. Uh, more than 1.2 million wells over the past 65 years have been fractured uh, in over 30 different states. It's, it's, it's now sort of regarded as a different thing because we're, we're talking about high volume. So we're sort of we're talking about more water down the well, more liquids down the well. But really the only fundamental difference we're talking about here is sort, sort of turning the drill bit horizontally. And previously, you know, what, what, what we would have had to go after would have taken us 10 different wells to drill. Now we drill one and go horizontally. So we get 10 times the amount of energy from one-tenth the number of wells. I mean, that's the, the, the huge breakthrough. So, Paul, what's the worry? This is a whole different ball game than whatever has happened in New York State before. We're talking about four to eight million gallons worth of water going into a well with as many as 300 different chemicals coming back up not only with those chemicals but also with radium from deep in the ground. That just begins to tell the story of how dangerous this process is. And Bill, let me ask you, and obviously your perspective is some of the uh, health concerns or claims here that are related to it. Why should somebody at home think that this is something that uh, could be potentially harmful? Uh, the chemicals that we are seeing um, that we believe are, are linked to fracking and the substances we believe that are coming up from fracking um, are both um, chemicals that are made by, by large corporations and used by the, by the gas industry. And then we also see naturally occurring materials that would not otherwise be in the well, such as barium, strontium, radium, manganese, uh, and the list goes on. A lot of this dialogue has changed because of what the EPA has recently released out of Wyoming and after a three-year study. And I know there's debate about the actual findings and the science behind the findings, but it certainly has seemed to change the dialogue. Because ac actually EPA didn't find anything in their actual drinking water that exceeded uh, a safe drinking water act standards. It's a draft, draft report. It's, it's, it's trying to make the case that um, that there might be a link between the, the, those two things. Uh, I think it's important to, to, to understand that even EPA has come out and said, look it, I mean, this is a draft report here, and we're not suggesting Fair that. Fair enough, that, that, but that, Paul, that, I, I thought the argument were from those uh, critics was, see, the aquifers could be compromised here. Take a look at what happened um, in Wyoming. Now, I know a lot of people look at environmentalists and they think all we care about are fish or birds. We're doing this because people are getting poisoned. But before we started, we were even debating about the spelling of fracking, okay? So <laughs> I know there's not going to be agreement on both sides of this table throughout this hour, but do we agree that there is empirical evidence that people have been harmed by hydrofracking in different parts of this country at any time? Do that's, we at least have any consensus on absolutely that? Absolutely not. There's no documented case of a release of hydraulic fracturing fluid into the environment from a natural gas well. This is what, why people not, don't trust accurate. you guys. Well, but, this is why people Paul, don't trust Paul, you guys. Paul, you don't come clean. Let's go back to the facts, and I explained this to you once before. By the way, have you been out to a well site yet? I sure have. Okay. People confuse naturally occurring methane in the groundwater with the hydraulic fracturing process. Okay, there are areas in New York State with no drilling anywhere in the area where you can this, uh, yeah. light a faucet on fire because there's naturally occurring shallow methane. As I said at the outset of the, uh, of the show, all right, New York has had casing and cementing standards for 30 years that are more stringent than the standards that Pennsylvania just uh, adopted a year ago. And that's what prevents uh, stray gas from being stirred up by the drilling, 
casing and cementing process in New York State. Families have, have found that there's arsenic in their water, that there's high toxic metals in the water. And sure, you know, there is a debate over whether you could have always lit your water on fire if you lived in Pennsylvania and New York. <laughs> Chris, I know, you know, we've spoken about that and you've had that experience yourself. We had a private water well. Uh, that was the source of our drinking water growing up. My father went out in the backyard uh, to get this water well and dug it with the backhoe and dug it into a coal seam. That's where the best water comes from in northeast Pennsylvania, actually the coal seams, believe it or not. It's the Brita water effect, the carbon filtering. You wouldn't think it would, you'd dig into a coal seam to get good water, but that's kind of how it happens. There's, other, there's something else in coal seams. It's methane. Um, um, and so, you know, the, the idea that, first of all, you know, I hope you guys are acknowledged, you don't, you're actually not lighting your water on fire, right? The water itself is not being lit on fire. It's methane coming through the faucet. Well, someone's sitting at home saying, wait a minute, I'm turning on my tap and I could actually light, you know, the methane, albeit, uh, that and we saw the demonstration that people are doing in their homes. Mm -hmm. Their instinct is say, I don't want this Especially in New York. Before natural gas exploration hit their town, they didn't have these problems with the water. One plate of mine. That's, that's absolutely one, true. One, I'll, I'll well, give you a USGS you know study from 1950. Yeah, please don't interrupt me. Okay. Uh, we, you we, would we, like to see that study or no? We, we, have, we have one plaintiff right now who is told by the DEP, do not drink your water, but you can shower with your water. Now, we all know, I mean, those of us who've been studying this, and you guys can't um, argue against this, is the EPA has, do, has done studies about the exposure um, that people will experience when showering with their water. And what we're seeing in the water is just not methane gas. We're seeing strontium, we're seeing barium, we're seeing manganese, and putting aside fracking fluids. I mean, come on, if you came clean, admitted there were problems with this, and we're going to make people good for the problems that we've caused, maybe you'd have a little more credibility. Industry can get off on this methane issue because the science isn't clear, and many scientists will tell you that they, they don't really know what levels of methane are harmful to you. But we have not yet spoken about when casings go bad or when there's blowouts or when it, there's it, it, cracks it, in the casings. You guys can but, talk but about let's that. Talk, let, let's that's look at the dirty secret of the industry. The, the DEP, the Pennsylvania DEP, Tom, and, and has, already, has already acknowledged that some one, at least one of Cabot's wells had a casing problem. And that well was shut mm. down, and the Pennsylvania DEP prohibited Cabot from drilling in a nine mile area and, in Dimmick, and Bill, Pennsylvania. And Bill, you know what, that, that's perfectly and, appropriate and have, response and I'm by DEP. And, I'm right? and Paul well, wants me to come clean, he's gonna get okay. it, okay? Can I just finish the if point? If there's a casing there, failure. He's gonna come clean, listen, let him come clean. All right, listen, hey, if there's a casing is, failure, the agency should react and it should uh, take enforcement action. That's what they did with Cabot. So are you ready to say right. that you're not sure that you haven't caused health problems? No, no, no. Well, the, the this, question, this, this are you the, sure you haven't caused issue. health problems, but you still want to see more data? Can you come up with a permutation where you say, okay, we'll meet you in effect halfway. We'll figure out what the safety precautions are, not by industry standards, but we're going to have a voice in the table. Or are you opposed unilaterally to it that this doesn't have a place in the state of New York? We don't know that it's safe, and until we know it's safe, and until we know that it benefits it's upstate communities, we're not going to do it. They haven't even started the review of whether this is going to be a boon to upstate communities or whether, like Cornell found, this is going to leave them in worse place in the long run. And I, I, I got to say that these upstate communities, the road costs, the impact on schools, on rooms. housing, Industry pays. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We'll get into that, we'll that, that is just not true. true. Do you believe we get them on record? You don't well, think I, think, I, I think New York is going to listen to these 60,000 comments. They're going to look at the statements of the Centers for Disease Control, and they're going to apply a proper degree of precaution so that they don't put us at risk as other states have been put at risk. What's your instinct in terms of how this gets resolved? From a timeline basis, we know it's going to be a little while since there's some decisions we made, but. It'll be done this year, and uh, we may what see will some. Be done? They'll they'll finish the process. They'll issue the final standards. All right, uh, I I think our governor gets it. He's he's uh, been very savvy on a, a number of issues and reforming the state. The people of New York City need natural gas. They need it for their buildings. They need it to uh, replace their fleets to clean up the air pollution in New York City. So you believe there will be a political will in Albany and a want from the general public? Absolutely. Let's keep going around the table. Chris, a year from now we sit at this table. Where is New York State as it relates to hydrofluorocarbons? Yeah, guys, you've gone all in on natural gas consumption. All right, so now where does your natural gas come from right now? It comes from the Gulf Coast and Canada. The question now is, are you going to produce it local, close to home? Are you going to benefit from the jobs that are, that are being generated from that? So that's the question I think that's going to be, going to be sort of asked and answered. There's no question about whether the New York's going to be using natural gas. Bill, you just found I, I think the political will of the people are going to prevail here because clearly uh, there are issues related to the whole 
process of natural gas exploration. And it needs to be put off the table until we understand really what the implications are and hold the industry to high standards, which the, you know, which are not being done throughout well, this country. We'll be talking to a member of the New York uh, legislature in, in the legislature in just a little bit, but uh, I want to first thank our panel here, Tom West, Chris Tucker, Bill, and also Paul. Guys, thank you all so much here. I appreciate it. Now, when we come back, we're going to have another impressive panel, and we're going to be talking again, obviously, about hydrofracking, but we're going to take a look at some of the dollars and cents surrounding it. Plus, we take a look at one of the main driving forces behind this, and that is what would be the net impact on the state of New York. Please, stay with us. Mm -hmm.